Aloha, I'm Joshua Cooper, and welcome to Cooper Union, What's Happening with Human Rights Around Our World on Think Tech Live, broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Moana, New Ikea. Today, we're looking at rights without distinction in our world, the universality of human rights, Article 2 in Asia, the case of North Korea. It's an honor to have amazing activists, advocates being able to share. And Venice, I'd love to ask you first, what first got you involved in this important issue, and why is it crucial for humanity? Thank you for the question. First of all, I'm South Korean Australian mm -hmm. and I had a time, um, I spent some time at the Sydney Jewish Museum as a volunteer researcher and meeting all these survivors um, and you know seeing them really actively spreading the message of peace, justice and tolerance really inspired me a lot. And I think that having met some North Koreans living in South Korea when I was working in South Korea, um, you know, their life stories um, and their escape stories have deeply moved me. So I was somehow able to connect the dots and here I am. Yun, thank you so much for joining us. And can you share with me why is this issue so important to you and why it should be central to the core of the global arena? Um, I was a victim and a survivor, but until the 2012, I didn't know the much about Universal Declaration of Human Rights and also international law because in my country, in North Korea and in China, the communism countries never mentioned about the human rights issues. But now I am a human rights activist and my voice is the North Korea, 25 million North Korean voices. So that is the international human rights that is uh, mentioned the individuals and uh, also human rights and dignities. So that's why that is really important for me. Thank you so much. And thank you for being the voice of all the people of North Korea that aren't able to speak and exercise Article 2, as well as many of the other articles in the UDHR. Can you share with us why this issue is important in international law to you and what first inspired you to get involved? Sure. Uh, as an educator based out of Taiwan for an international school, um, I think that human rights, especially the reflections and the dialogues on human rights are, are quite vital when it comes to uh, the peaceful resolution of the cross-strait issue. Uh, and it's quite important for us to be equipping students with, with the tools and the mindset that's going to lead to the development of uh, the capacity to engage with views that may be different uh, from their own um, in a peaceful and amicable way with without resorting to violence. Thank you so much. And of course, peace is at the core of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And Michael Kirby, we really thank you so much for joining us. We know you have done so much in Australia for human rights, but also throughout the region and the role that you've taken at the UN. Can you share with us that role you've taken at the UN regarding North Korea and Article 2? Well, I was asked to serve as chair of the Commission of Inquiry on North Korea exactly 10 years ago. And therefore, I'm going through a series of conferences uh, remembering that 10-year um, interval and what we've achieved and what has not been achieved. The Commission of Inquiry conducted its inquiry in the Anglo-American way. That is to say, we had public hearings, we had the media present, uh, and we uh, put, kept the uh, witness evidence online. You can still see it there, Commission of Inquiry on North Korea. Uh, and the object was to provide the General Assembly, uh, the Human Rights Council, and ultimately the Security Council of the United Nations a, an independent, um, impartial report on North Korea. I have been a judge for 34 years before I sat on the inquiry, uh, and uh, that's what we did. We prepared uh, an independent report. We made our findings, uh, and those findings were overwhelmingly very critical uh, of North Korea. We didn't agree with all of the submissions, but we agreed with most of them and we presented a case for action against those who are guilty for human rights abuses in North Korea. And 
Unfortunately, that requires the, in the uh, in action of the Security Council, and that has to overcome the veto power that belongs to the P5, the permanent five members, and that includes the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. Uh, without that action by the Security Council, it's impossible to refer the matter to the uh, International Criminal Court. And so we have not achieved our goal, but we have our record. And the record speaks to the world. And my hope is that the record will respond ultimately to the appeal of Jiwon and other human rights activists uh, for North Korea, for the people of North Korea, uh, because they are the people who are the core of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Thank you so much, Michael. And that really gets to the point of what Venice was sharing earlier. Venice, can you share with me, what's the state of human rights in North Korea and what are some of the most important issues the world should know about? Um, certainly there are other people who may know more about what's really going on inside North Korea. And when people say, you know, we don't really know much about North Korea, it's not a criticism. It really is a country that is so incredibly difficult to know. Um, and 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 what really goes on, um, and and the, you know the situation changes. So at the moment, the pressing issue, one of the pressing issues, is that the issue of the repatriation of North Koreans um, back to North Korea from China. So there are um, currently about thirty three thousand thirty three hundred um, three thousand three hundred three hundred um, stateless North Koreans um, scattered all all over China. So you know we had Jihan here this morning, and she was one of those people um, miraculously was able to find her freedom. And at the moment, now that the COVID is over, um, China is actually planning to um, repatriate North Koreans um, and they will you know, face executions and all kinds of inhumane treatment um, back in their homeland. So this is a situation that we would like to, as activists, um, the world to know and do something about. Thank you. Jiyun, what would you share the most important issues as the voice of North Korea that the world must know about and that we should all take action together to end? Uh, Ten years ago, CY uh, report came out, but you know that many people still don't understand this North Korea systems. So firstly, it's many people, they don't know that it's North, North Korea politics because it's North Korea controlled to us is the 10 principles and also Workers' Party Korea, they control the all people. And you know, also is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Article 2 mentioned that we respected all humans without the colors, nationalities, you know, sex, everything is mentioned that. But in North Korea, they divided classifications. So this means they divided uh, three different uh, classes in, pe uh, uh, in North Korean people is the elitors and also middle class and the hostile classes. So we hated each other, is Koreans, each other, and we always is um, looking forward to them, what they say, what they kind of actions. But not only to that, we also hated Americans and the South Koreans and also who uh, doesn't like that in socialism countries. So that is a kind of political emotions uh, I learned that when I, when I was born. So that is all North Korea systems. So North Korean people still don't know that what's happened in outside the countries. And also they don't know about the histories too, because North Korea published only fake histories and brainwashed the people. And they also destroyed their thinking. So we North Koreans kind of is <coughs> giving allegiums the machines, kind of is a puppet, because it's a, we don't know the, what is the human right meanings, what is the human dignities. We don't know also what is individual's meanings. So, you know, the nowadays, is a, the, when it's already mentioned that it's a China repatriated to North Koreans, uh, North, uh, North Korean refugees to North Korea. So, you know, the many females, they um, human trafficking in China after pregnant baby, 
but the Chinese Communist Party continued to send back to them. So North Korea not allowed these mixed babies in North, North Korea. So they miscarried this baby or killed the unborn baby in front of mothers. And also, you know, that in China, too many <clears throat> is the child who are born in North Korean mother, and they also statelessness. So that is all happened in now, but it's in the world never listened, and you know the world is still the silent. Is North and China's issues. Thank you so much for sharing about the power of propaganda, but also all the rights are interconnected, and the sad part of it, the dividing and conquering is still going on within the people of North Korea, but then also to perpetuate a, a distrust of people outside as well. Jun, can you share with us the issues in North Korea that we should all care about most? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I believe that it's all good and well for us to pay lip service to the issue of human rights, but to really uh, put this into perspective, especially for students, it may be necessary to provide greater relatability and um, greater connection to the personal stories that result uh, from the circumstances that we find ourselves in, especially those stories from survivors uh, such as Jihan and others. Um, I believe that this is very important for connecting the issue to students and to prevent it from being relegated to the type of issue that is far removed uh, from their awareness and their daily lives. And it's important for us also to encourage dialogue and reflection on the issue. And so in doing so, uh, have students be able to relate to this, not just on an issue that's mentioned in the news or that's mentioned in the textbooks, but really as an issue that has a human face to it. Thank you. And, and Michael, you talked about the record, and I think that's so important to really document what has happened to people, to put a face on the situation in North Korea. What would you highlight that are the most pressing issues in North Korea today? Well, um, before I was appointed by the United Nations for North Korea, I had worked uh, for the Secretary General as a Special Representative for Human Rights in Cambodia. And Cambodia went through the period of the Khmer Rouge misrule. Uh, and um, one of the important lessons I learned in that exercise was keeping the record, taking the record, uh, distributing the record uh, was extremely important. It's important for the history of the country concerned. Uh, and in terms of the work of the Human Rights Council of the United Nations, North Korea is a really bad job, and uh, therefore uh, the nine-point program which we were given uh, in the Commission of Inquiry on North Korea dealt with the priority issues as seen by the Human Rights Council. Uh, access and ability uh, to get around. In North Korea, they don't allow their citizens to move except under great uh, discipline and control. They don't allow tourists or others to go and visit them and report on their condition. As Ji Hun has said, women and children are a major issue. Many actions and abuses were uh, brought to attention in our report. The politics of the place is such that you can't have a different point of view. Uh, abductions of foreign nationals, including many Japanese nationals is a major issue. I mean, they said they've sent uh, their agents into Japan uh, effectively to steal uh, Japanese citizens, to bring them to North Korea, to teach them Japanese language so that they can go back as uh, spies and uh, intrude into uh, Japan. Um, and uh, the problem of nuclear, nuclear and other weapons, long-range missiles, this is something really that has become worse uh, than since the report of the Commission of Inquiry. We didn't actually deal uh, much with that because it wasn't such a big issue, but since the report of the Commission of Inquiry, 
the development of nuclear weapons uh, and the firing uh, repeatedly of missiles, even one when uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un went to meet Mr. President Putin, uh, a missile was sent just to let everybody know that that's the business they're in and that's the business they're rather good at and that's where they're spending their money instead of food. Food is a big issue in North Korea. So all of these are the issues, but the question is, how do we move from a report and the uh, chronicling of the sad history of North Korea since the Second World War, and how do we convert it into an action plan? And that's what uh, is a high priority at this stage. Building on those great points from chronicling to creating a culture of human rights, could you share with us, Venice, a little bit about who you see as some of the champion NGOs and sheroes and heroes that are doing action to counter the situation in North Korea to ensure human rights? Thank you for the question. And it's a great one because um, actions speak louder than words. And I really would like to take the opportunity to um, convey my appreciation on behalf of all the you know, activists I'm working to improve the situation in North Korea. And here we have the unsung hero, a very Australian hero, Michael Kirby, joining us and sharing his wisdom and experience um, over the past 10 years, really. Because um, the, I guess, Commission of the Inquiry, you know, you as a chair, you only serve for one year. You have no um, obligation to continue your activism or um, um, commitment towards the course. But um, Michael has really been um, such a champion in the sense that he always says yes to these engagements. He does not need to. So I just like to say thank you for um, being here today and 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 still um, making your voice heard for the people of North Korea. Um, another person that I like to mention um, is not alive, and his name is Raphael Lemkin. He is a Jewish lawyer and philosopher and somebody who actually coined the term genocide. And I think it's important for, you know, we're talking about the, you know, the UDHR article two in Asia. And as an Asian person, um, I never learned about Michael Duncan. I never learned about what genocide really meant because we talk about atrocities and violence and, you know, bad things happening in the world, but the conceptualization of human rights and all these contemporary frameworks and, um, um, I guess the legal frameworks. We, um, we, as Jun mentioned, we need to educate the young ones to understand as to how we come to understand and and exercise our rights as humans and and protect others' rights as well. So it's not really about North Koreans at the end of the day. As we protect others, as we um, become a good neighbor, when you're a good neighbor, we are. You know, it's important to uh, be a good citizen and be a good neighbor. And this is. For me, um, that everybody is a hero. There isn't, you know, one single hero in this world. And we, as adults, we have a responsibility to, um, I guess, continue this legacy. Um, what the survivors of the Holocaust have really done in the human rights. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, highlight. That. Well, thank you for mentioning Raphael Lemkin and his important work that he did to then make sure that we have those five elements of what genocide is and noting that it's not all five but just one to actually constitute the crime of genocide so we really appreciate you sharing that and also the sense of solidarity that was really born in san francisco when the u.n Charter was created that we're all in this together and we must organize Julian, can you share with us some heroes you see and champion heroes that work on north korea on a daily basis Yes, for me, I have two heroes. So first is the Michael Kirby and in the games. So you know, the, without the, the them, is this world still don't know the, what's happened in North Korea? Because the myself the came to the UK two thousand eight. You know, the many people didn't know North Korea. They only knew Korea. And also some people knew South Korea. So they talked about the North Korea as a part of in province in North side. And also many people don't know that it's a Korean war. 
I know that this school is already teaching about the Korean War, but it is not is really important histories at the moment. So many people didn't understand about the North Korea and the human rights issues. But after the COI came out, and you know, many people wake up because the people talked about the Holocaust already past 1940s. But this another genocide that happened in 21st centuries. So Michael Kobe reminded to us again is it the uh, human rights issues. So I'm really thankful for Michael Kobe again being here and also they team. And the second my hero is my uh, 25 million Koreans. Because you know that I live in freedom country. So sometimes, you know, I give up the my opportunity. Sometimes I give up my freedoms because that is a freedom country. But I think about the, my North Korean people and then I just need to start up again. Yes, freedom need our responsibility and duty. And the freedom is not free. You know, the poor myself escaped North Korea and arrived in the UK. That is a long journey, so 10 years journey. But you know, the, my freedom is sacrificed my fathers and also my younger brothers and also my sons. So this freedom is not only my freedom. That is all my father, my younger brother, and also my freedom's journey. So it is nowadays is 25 million my North Korean uh, people journey and they never give up and they continue to fight. I know they at the moment is silent, but they continue to fight is a generation. So they are my unsung heroes. Thank you so much. And June, can you share some NGOs that you see are really championing the issues in North Korea? Because as she pointed out, directly impacted are really the heroes as they endure and are forced to have their rights violated daily. But can you share some that you think that are making the world more aware of what's happening in North Korea and why it's so important? Sure. I would just like to echo Wanis and Ji Hyun's sentiments and uh, comment on the fact that I think North Korean survivors have an important role to play in the education of the next generation, not only in terms of addressing the issues which we presently face with North Korea, uh, but also in ensuring that this never happens again. Um, and regarding organizations that are doing good work in the field, uh, Winis and I are currently in discussions with one such organization, uh, Uni Korea. And I believe that in the future, the focus should be on educating younger age groups because this is really where uh, we could have the most impact. Thank you. Human rights education, of course, is absolutely valuable and very important. And Michael, could you share with us some champions that you see that are carrying the mantle of what you've chronicled and are taking actions regularly to make sure North Korea is featured? Well, there are so many uh, civil society organizations working for uh, human rights in North Korea that I, I hesitate to single one out, but um, all the familiar uh, and well-known international human rights bodies, but also a large number of them in South Korea. Uh, you don't get any from North Korea because of the rigid regime there. But uh, we were basically set up because of activism of civil society calling for a commission of inquiry. They called for it over and over again, but ultimately in 2013 it happened and we were set up and uh, it wasn't a one-man show. We had a very fine... Uh, lawyer and uh, human rights um, observer, Marzuki Darasman, and uh, he was from Indonesia and a very fine um, uh, activist from uh, Serbia, uh, Sonja Berserko. And so we three decided we were going to do this inquiry in a different way. Most UN inquiries are done in what I'll call the Napoleonic way, the French law system. It's a matter of going to a back room and reading all the reports and getting a report 
uh, done, but we did it in public. And in our report, every second page has quotes from the witnesses. Uh, and as has been said by others in this program, uh, by doing that, we spotlighted the uh, human terms of the crisis of human rights in North Korea. And I think that was the reason why there was such resolve. It, when the report came down, it was a sensation in the United Nations. They'd never had a report done in this way. Uh, and it uh, led to um, the establishment of the Commission of Inquiry, a very strong vote in the Human Rights Council, an extremely big vote in the General Assembly, and then um, almost uniquely a decision of the General Assembly to recommend that it be referred to uh, the Security Council. Because as uh, has been said before by others, um, human rights and international peace and security are both mentioned in the preambles to the um, General uh, Charter of the United Nations uh, and in the Universal Declaration. So uh, putting them together and intertwined led to the referral to the Security Council. And uh, the subject is on the agenda of the Security Council. There was a meeting uh, last December uh, of the Security Council meeting more, more recently. Uh, and so it won't go away. It's on the highest organs of the United Nations. And what we need is our governments, the governments of countries that respect human rights, to be stalwart and vigilant in raising the issues presented in the report of the COI, and most especially the Republic of Korea, South Korea, uh, under the previous administration of Moon Jae-in, uh, they uh, were really very reluctant to upset North Korea because they thought softly, softly and sweetly they might lead to change. And I think Mr. Trump might have also thought that. But it doesn't work with North Korea. They've got too much of an investment in the King, Kim dynasty and therefore it hasn't worked, and that's why we've now got the problem, which is being focused in the 10th anniversary of the COI, uh, the problem of what we do to convert words into action. I agree, actions speak louder than words, but words are very important because they provide the record and the mobilisation for civil society to keep the focus of discussion uh, on human rights abuses in North Korea. And I hope that is going to happen in the 75th anniversary of the UDHR, which we will be um, observing in December of this year. Uh, an Australian, Dr. H. V. Everett, was in the chair as president of the General Assembly. It was the third uh, session of the General Assembly in 1948, and he gaveled the UDHR into action. So we have a special commitment and knowledge of the uh, Universal Declaration, and I hope we're going to have a lot of countries getting behind us for the uh, reflection on the 75th anniversary of the UDHR on the 10th of December. Thank you so much, and it's really great to have that background. You also then provide insight as we're looking on the 30th anniversary of the Bangkok Declaration, of course, which was crucial for civil society come together. And it is great to see where we're at now, but pointing out the blueprint for where we need to go forward. Winnie, can you share with us your future vision for the future of human rights in North Korea? Sure. Um, it's a big question because there's so much work to be done. And, and to expect um, changes um, in North Korea, it's, 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 it's not easy. Um, as activists, we often all go through this sort of fatigue and and sense of despondency almost that what can we really um, do about people that are trapped you know, um, in the country? And and I guess you know I just wanted to mention you know um, about the importance of the Holocaust education, the global Holocaust education and genocide prevention institutions and initiatives that have been really, really um, working hard to spread the message of tolerance, empathy, understanding, um, and, you know, 
that we're all humans, whether we're Jewish, South Korean, North Korean, Chinese, half Chinese, half North Korean, um, really doesn't matter. We're all humans. And I think it's important that we look out for each other, you know, um, um, and, you know, intergovernmental organizations such as International um, Holocaust Remembrance Alliance um, yes. or IRA, um, have been very, very active in terms of spreading this exact message. And I think that Australia is a member if, um, since 2019, but South Korea isn't a member. In fact, Australia is the only country from the Asia Pacific region to be a member and the observing country in New Zealand. But I think we need to do better that more Asian countries such as Cambodia, China, South Korea should join um, organizations such as IRA and really, um, yeah, spread and keep spreading the message that more people will be encouraged to you know, be a good neighbor. So it is important as we just had the 78th session of the UN General Assembly open last week. Ji Young, can you share with us your vision for the future of human rights in North Korea? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, there is uh, this week, is uh, Korea is a special week, you know, the full moon is a two So every year, you know, the two is uh, coming and we are really came, it's especially, you know, the I still don't know the where my father body at and you know and the whereabouts of my younger brother. So that is my hope one day we reunited the, my families. But this is not easy, you know, that is for me when uh COI report came out, you know, I believed that it's North Korea quickly changed and my people pretty yeah, it's the same as me, but it's ten years, it's still Happening still, my country people, invisible, unwanted people, is the in this world. So, uh, it's now is uh, I am activities and also is uh, many people mentioned that is education is really important. So you know the article two also mentioned the language. So many people think about that is the South Korea and the North Korea is the same language uh, we used, but. North Korean people use the totally different language because it's a North Korea region, it's a Kim Dynasty. They um, destroyed our personal language. They always use the political languages. So we are writing the political issues. We listen to the only political uh, issues, you know, for the right, everything is we use the political. So many North Korean defectors, they sharing the story in the outside world. They speaking is a kind of politics, but you know, there's many NGOs and also, you know, that translations, they change the lot of meanings. So after it's our it's evidence is gone because this is a worship another South worship or translate different languages. So I, I hopefully in future in educations or academics and NGOs, they have to understand the North Korean languages because our language is not only language, that is our memories and our survival story and the history. So we have to, is uh, we have to is put our original is the evidence in the book. Thank you, Ji Yun, for really reminding us how personal this is for you and for so many North Koreans. Jun, can you briefly share your vision? It would be immensely positive if we could see stronger collaboration in this area, especially collaboration between activists, NGOs, survivors, um, even forums and platforms such as this, uh, Joshua, this which you are hosting right now. I believe that this is immensely powerful. And I think that for education, it would be wonderful for uh, the various stakeholders and the various forces to join together to create something that will hopefully inspire the future generations. Thank you. And Michael, final words, your vision for this important issue. Well, my vision is that the world, and in particular North Koreans, should know that the United Nations cares, that we care, that we are on the issue, and we are going 
to not give up but insist uh, on delivering the respect for human rights, uh, which uh, really we gave an, a plan of action, a roadmap in our report, uh, and good things were done. There is a special rapporteur, Elizabeth Salmon, who continues the work of the COI, uh, and uh, the votes, as I said, were very strong in the organs of the United Nations. Uh, and uh, as uh, has been said by others in this program, all of these issues are integrated. The issue of human rights, the issue of the environment, the issue of uh, nuclear weapons and the safety of our world. Um, where would we be if we didn't have the United Nations to provide a forum and to provide the people of the world with the opportunity through their nations to express their concerns about uh, these issues? We've established a field office uh, in uh, North Korea, in South Korea, which continues recording the stories of those who have suffered. Uh, and we participate in programs such as this so that citizens of countries who are members of the United Nations will know and will lend their support uh, to the action which the COI recommended. We mustn't forget the people of North Korea. Thank you. The theme of never forget was a huge aspect at the creation of the UDHR. And of course, with the UN Sustainable Development Goals at halfway, that enlarging to make sure that climate is also part of the conversation. We thank you all for joining us, and we know we'll all stay involved to achieve the UDHR on the 75th anniversary going forward into the future. Mahalo Nui, thank you for joining us today.